Ray Wade with just a release once again. Come to just do some talking. Mm -hmm. Expressing in. Enjoying this cool day. Cool but sunny. Yes, yeah, it's, a, it's a nice day in the neighborhood. A nice day in the neighborhood. <laughs> Y'all remember that, Mr. Rogers? Yes, yeah, a nice day, beautiful day. Beautiful day, little old sunset. Little old sunset, pretty trees. They had a wind blowing the other week. Knocked some tree limbs down, knocked one down in our backyard. Didn't even know it. I was looking at my neighbor, knocked one of his branches down all the time. It knocked one down in our backyard. We that weather, that weather, it's something serious. Yes, yes, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, in the neighborhood. Yes. Yeah, I was just wanted to reminisce some more on the institution about the white boys. I feel like I, you know, should speak a little bit more, a little bit deeper about the white boys that's in TDC and that was in TDC back in the days when I first started off doing time. You know, I told you last night that because of those white boys from yesterday, they made it easy for the white boys today in the institutions. Now, you know, I remember when when the white boy first came to the and they put them on certain blocks. You went to certain blocks back then when you first get there. You didn't go to the dormitories or anything like that unless you came at the trustee camp. But they had to fight when they came through the gate. When they came with their things in their hands, they used to have guys at the bars in the day room waiting to see the chains come in. The chains, this is the inmates, they call it the chains. And when they came through, it'd be like the guys in the day room, the same daily basis that watches the chains that come in, they be there prowling. They be there prowling on the white boys. Hey, hey, you gonna, you gonna, hey, you, hey, hey, you, hey, you, you gonna ride with me. Ride <coughs> is what they used to call it. Riding, you ride. I told you every white boy wasn't a punk in the system, but in some form, they was riding. They might, they might have not been getting fucked, but they was paying. They was paying money to for protection because them guys that was there for so long, they already had things that they had situated on how they were so. It'd be more than one of them, you know. If you got uh, a white boy coming on the chain, and it's two of them, it might be two white boys and four Mexicans and six blacks or something of that nature that's coming on the chain. So, like when I first came and I went to Ferguson, me and my silly, we came there together. And we already had a set what we was going to do together. So... You know, it was, it, was, it was whatever, you know, and I had a pair of brand new joy. I was the first guy to come on Ferguson with a pair of Jordans on his feet. So they was I already had a price on my shoes already, ready to try to take my shoes or whatever, how they was going to do it. But they seen that I knew so many people because my best friend out my neighborhood, he was already there. And, I, and a partner of mine that was from Acres Home, he was already there. He was screaming my name when I was coming through the door. Trade off, trade off. Because he had caught the chain like a couple weeks before I did from the county. But I made a name for myself in the county. So my name was already there on Ferguson before I got there. You know, they always talk about, you know, the, when you get to a unit. Man, you know, Dre Dog up in that county, he acting a fool. Or, or such and such, he acting a fool. You know, they talk about your name and your name travel before you even must get there. And they always thinking I was coming with a whole bunch of time. But I ended up beating my robber cases. And I went to prison for probation violation. And I stayed three months and got out. Never did get an opportunity to see the games that the men played in the, in the penitentiary. Never did see it. 
at that time. But man, did I see some damnest things in them three months towards them white boys. And I mean until I made, I did not see one white boy that came on the chain after me or with me make it. They didn't make it. And like I say, they had one white boy already there and he was established. He's just sitting in the day room with his hair slicked back, his Stacey Adams on, he was pressed down and, and he was always by himself because he had already he went through what the white boys had to go through. And he he established respect. He was from Fifth Ward and he was a fighter. That white boy was a fighter. And I knew, I, I ended up meeting as time as me going to prison. And when I went in 1990, I met some killer white boys that was known. And if you was on ESAM, you know who them white boys was. Them white boys was six something. Big old white boys. And they wasn't to be played with. And some of them was ex bill tenders. Now the bill tender, the bill tender era, that was a different era. And on ESAM, they had places where they sent our white boys. And if they sent a black dude over there, they were trying to mess you off. They was trying to get you messed off because them white boys, they would have messed you off down there. But they have a story. They got an ESAM story of them trying to do it to this other black dude. And this black dude, he wasn't your average. He was a big guy, and he was a killer. And he was whooping everything that they throw at you because those officers back then and them wardens and majors, they was cold-blooded. They, they, would, they, would kill, they would get you killed up in there. But they sent this dude, Warden Martin was the warden, black man. They sent this dude and moved him down there with them white boys. But he already knew what they was trying to do to him. So before he went, before he packed his stuff, he got him two big old knives. Got him two big bad knives. And when he went and they moved, they moved him down there to the block with them white boys, he went inside his cell and he taped them knives around his wrist. He didn't unpack his property. When they ran that in and out to let them out for the day room, he went into the day room, and when they shut that day room, he stabbed every white boy in that day room. He stabbed every white boy in that day room. And they got a thing that they can't, they can't rush inside the day rooms when they have fights and stuff. They can't open, open the day room door and go in there. So everybody that was in there getting stabbed by this dude. Everybody was getting stabbed by this dude and Ward Martin, they called Ward Martin and told Ward Martin. Ward Martin said, don't nobody go in there and touch him. Wait till I get there. And when Ward Martin came, they let the guy out the day room and they took him on the solitary. Didn't even put no handcuffs on him. He still had the knives taped around his wrist. And when you talk about, when you talk about Esam, used to be one of the most you used to be the most dangerous unit in America at one time. They was they were it wasn't about no fighting. It wasn't about no fighting. Yeah, you had some fights on the basketball court, which was one of the reasons why I stopped playing basketball over there at one time. Dude was knocking dudes teeth out their mouth. I had to steal a dude one time. Yeah, steal him. Waited till he went up for the ball, and I stole him coming down. Bam! That's the kind of games we played. That's the kind of games we played. We look for advantages. Just like bullies. They look for the weak. They look for the weak. If they see something about you that ain't going to be weak about you, they're not going to try you. They're not going to. They'll try you, and, but not physically. They'll come with you some kind of game and, and hoping they can, uh, you know, get you in that way. Because I seen a dude, he was from California. You know, you was, 
back in them early days, if you was from out of state, man, and you 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 had to fight too. If you was light skinned, you had to fight. You don't care. They were trying everybody, man. They they would try everybody. They didn't just try white boys, Mexicans. Yeah, I seen a dude one night fight about seven Mexicans behind one Mexican punk. The Mexican was trying to get the Mexican punk from the black dude. He whooped every last one of them and didn't want nobody help. Whooped it with about seven Mexicans. Cause the Mexicans had a thing that. See, when, when one of them black dudes turned one of them Mexicans out, see, them Mexicans, they ain't going to go turn. They didn't have that kind of finesse. or, or They wasn't that, that, that rowdy. So they didn't, they wait till one of them, uh, them black dudes turn one of them Mexicans out, and then they'll go try to take the Mexican from the black dude in a pack. But it, don't, it didn't work like that. Like I say, you didn't have all them gangs in, in the penitentiaries then. Because if you was Hispanic, Hispanic, they they kind of bring you over in they in they mode, and if they find out you gay, all them gonna fuck you. All them gonna fuck their little homeboys. They ain't, they ain't they ain't they ain't just so real that they didn't fuck punks. Yeah, they did too. Got fucked. Talking about I'm a lieutenant. I'm a lieutenant, man. I'm a lieutenant, Holmes. Oh, you a lieutenant, but you a punk. That's crazy. Mandingos, all that they had, all that they had. Mandingos, Mexican mafia. In the penitentiary back then, and now you got everything Pisces and uh, Hood, Woods, or you got everything in there now. Are you, uh, you know, you just got so much of gangs in prison now. Too many. Andre Wade would just release. Ah.